Hello everyone, welcome to this second video in this series video. And in this video, we will discuss how can we transfer one existing transfer function, S domain transfer function, into Z domain, Z is transform, and then convert this Z transfer equation into difference equation like this style. And once we convert one S domain transfer function into the difference equation this style, then it will be available for us to use the PLC or embedded system or the code system to implement this transfer function and we can simulate this controlled object, okay? And firstly, I'd like to quickly review the previous video what we talked. So in the previous video, we discussed, firstly, we need to identify if your system can react as the first order response curve. This is the exponential curve like this there. When you give the system a bump test, you can monitor the response of your system. If your response of your system shows like this exponential style, then we will say we can use the first order transfer function to approximate your system and use the first order transfer function as your system model, okay? And keep in mind, while we're using the first order transfer function, the entire format is like this. And S plus A is the denominator. The denominator side, it has two portions. One is this A, this usually we call exponential frequency. And also we need to involve the K. K it actually include the unit of the system. For example, while I'm using the temperature, so we are using the difference of the output over the difference of the input, then we got this K. This K actually includes the voltage as the input and the, the degree Celsius, this is the output. So it includes this unit here. Other than that, we need to be very carefully while we are using this model to approximate this system, the initial status is also very important. While we are doing this, the initial status, that is a one watt and output at the moment, that was the 50 Celsius degree. And while we are using the model to calculate an output, we need to minus this initial input. And while we are calculating the output, the model of the output, this is the 170 degree and the output of the actual the system, we need to involve the initial temperature 50. So finally, the temperature from this calculation, this is the 225 Celsius degree. So there's two tribes, keep in mind. One is we have involved the gain of the transfer function. Second, we also involve the initial status, don't forget. In the real practice, most of system, their initial status they are now the zero, so you need to be very carefully. And then in this video, we will discuss the Z transform. If you learned the control theory before, you will think, okay, so transfer from the S domain into Z domain, actually we can reference the table, usually this table called Z transform table. We can reference this table and we can convert the transfer function very easily. However, if you look at this, so firstly, I would say this transform from S domain to Z domain, this is the correct answer. If you are using the PLC or any embedded system or computer to sample your analog signal into the digital world, this is the correct transform. However, if you browse this table, you will see at this style, S plus A as a denominator, we can reference this line and the third column, this is the Z domain transfer function. So you will see this area and this area, they are not the same. So what happened? Then we will see this is a search trap while we are doing this entire transform, especially from this S domain to Z domain. So this transform cannot directly convert to here. While we are using the digital computer, PLC embedded system, COSI system, convert an analog signal into digital signal, convert to the data inside the PLC, inside your computer, we definitely need to sample system. Usually we call it ADC, right? While we're doing this, we have to involve another concept that is a zero order sample and a holder. Usually this name is a ZOH. That's because when we sample those dots, 
from an uh, analog signal. Analog signal basically it's always continuously, right? But when we convert the uh, analog signal into the digital, well, we're using the ADC. So we're using the sample. We sample this analog signal. But when we sample this analog signal, it yields the staircase approximation to the analog signal. That's why when we convert the S domain transfer function into Z domain, Z domain is a digital word. So we have to involve the zero order sample and the holder, ZOH. Then that also bring up a topic. So when we convert the S domain transfer function, when we convert like this, a first order transfer function into Z domain, we cannot directly browse the Z transform table, directly transfer it. We have to involve the zero holder. Then how can we convert this? So I can manually derive our equation here. So definitely this is a very typical, very classic knowledge. Here, I just try to explain the storage behind to show how this come from. All right, so while we transfer a GS transfer function, S domain transfer function into a G domain, we cannot directly convert this by using the table. We cannot do that. Alternatively, we have to involve the Z holder here. And the Z holder is running this style. Okay, so we can see the sample, it is at here. And the transfer of the zero holder and your process model, the controlled object model, they are involved together. So if you recall the Z transform knowledge, while we are doing the Z transform, we have to do this way. So we have to involve the zero holder. So the zero holder multiply the G transfer, and then we do this Z transform, okay? So we can say this is the Z transform. Z transform, this is a zero holder. So the zero holder transfer function, it is here. So the zero holder, we can write down here. This is a zero holder. And the T here, this is simple time. So for example, if you are using PLC to calculate this entire equation, if in your PLC, the second time to run the difference equation, the sampling time is 100 milliseconds, then that T is a 0 0.1 second, okay? So S here, this is the S domain, S domain here, okay? And uh, so you need to multiply the G transfer. And our controlled object, G transfer, so we can still use our first order transfer function here. Then we will see, we will convert this area and this area into two area, okay? The Z transfer, we will do the S, S denominator, and the nominator is the GS, okay? Then we will do the Z transfer and the minus, minus come from here, come from here. And then do the second portion of the Z transfer. Section portion is still the S is a denominator and the GS multiply the E power T sample time and the S domain S, okay? And in the Z transform idea, and this area after the Z transfer, this is the one sample delay. So one sample delay, we will use Z minus one. This means this is the previous time of the sample result. So then after this convert, we will do this way. And this area, so this is previous sample. So this is the Z minus one, okay? And uh, then this area is still the same. So we will do the Z transform and uh, this area is the same. Then we will see this area and this area, they are the same. So then we will do very simple convert. This area is one. We grab this area out, okay? Then it will times Z domain of S, G, S here. Okay. Then we will convert a little bit into another style. This can also be convert because this is the minus one, right? So minus one means Z is at the denominator and one is at 
nominator, right? So ultimately, this result is equal to this. As we can see, well, we uh, convert uh, S domain into Z domain to implement the difference equation. Okay, we can now directly convert the first order directly go to the Z transform. We have to evolve the zero holder. And after the zero holder, actually the result while we are doing this convert, this transform, transform from the I domain into the Z domain. So we have to evolve the H holder. And after this convert, so we need to use this equation to convert the GS into Z domain. Okay, so let's do a practice using this concept. All right, so this equation, this actually come from the S domain convert to Z transform when you evolve the Z holder. And here, the GS, this process object, this transform function is a first order transform function. So we also write K here. Then how can we do this convert? Okay, so this area, I will say equal to, again, we will do Z, Z minus one. And then we will do a Z transform involve S and uh, multiply a K times A and then do S plus A. We'll do this way. Then actually this area we will see. This area will become the denominator will become S and the K times A. Okay, then we will see. Originally, the transfer function is actually this style, but while we are using the zero holder, the actual transfer function, it become this style here. This area is constant. We can grab them out of this, this transform. So the inside here, it actually need to reference this line. So we will see the Z transform actually now become this style now, okay? Then we can do this convert. Firstly, I will leave this Ka here, and then it will do Z, Z minus one, and times the entire of this area, Z transfer convert, we will reference here. Then this whole area, I will write down here, Z one minus E A T. T here means sample time, okay? Z minus one and uh, Z minus E minus A T, sample time. Okay, then we will see something can be eliminated. So this, this can be eliminated and this this can be eliminated, and the A here can be eliminated. Then the final result of this whole area, that can, this is the K here, right? This is the K. This area, the denominator is one minus E, A, and the nominator become E, become Z minus E. Power is minus A, T, T is a simple time. Okay. And here, if we multiply Z power minus one, Z power minus one at denominator and the nominator. So then this equation will become K one minus Z T times Z minus one. Okay. And uh, the nominator will become times z minus one. Okay, so here you may be asked questions. So why we need to multiply the z minus power one? In the real case, the z minus power one means the one sample before. For example, if your PLC is running in a current loop, so in current step, if we are going to use the result came from the previous sample time, that value actually means z minus one. That means the previous sample time. The next time sample, the Z here, that means the next sample time. But you definitely can record the previous sample time value. 
So that's why we will convert into this minus style, minus one style. That means the previous sample time. Okay, so this handwriting is a little bit ugly here, and I will convert into a beautiful style. So we will see in my original style here, I will copy, let's compare here. So we will see the left side area, we can temporarily ignore here. This area is exactly the same. So keep in mind the T0 here, that means the sample time of your computer system. Okay, say minus one. So look at it here and watch here. So the Z minus one, this is the one item. And the nominator area Z minus one work for all of those item. Okay, and this came from the G transfer function involved the zero holder. And that means what? That means if we go back to two page here, that means here is my PLC. This is your process. Now your process transfer function is the GS first order, right? And now we convert this area, sample this area. And the input, it came from the PLC output. Okay, we name this, this is the XK. K means the current sample time control signal. And the result come from your process. That is the Y in the current sample time. Okay, so the HG transform, Z transform, that actually means your YZ over XZ. And uh, the result is here. And this transform involves the zero holder that actually this tail rather than directly this tail. Okay, so we need to keep in mind while we we'll convert one S domain transfer function. So we need to evolve the zero holder to do the Z transform. And then after we convert transform to Z domain, this is the first order transfer function converted the result. And here, if our transfer function, it has K here, and don't forget this K, the constant, also need to be involved at here. Also need to be involved at here. Okay, this is the constant value. Okay, and after here, while we we'll convert from the Z transform into this difference equation, this difference equation still, this will become very easy. So let me do that. So while we are doing this convert, keep in mind here, Z minus, that means the previous sample time result. So usually we call this K minus one because K means the current time and the minus one means the previous sample time. Then this whole area doesn't have any change, right? A is also the constant T zero. That means your PLC, your computer sample time. For example, T zero is 100 milliseconds is equal to 0 0.1 second. Okay. And this area will be converted to here. Okay, and this area we will see this area become what? This area Y will multiply this area. So Y Z we will convert to the K, the current time, and the minus minus E power is this. And when the K and when the Z multiply this, that means we will pick the Y comes from the previous sample time. So we will multiply the Y come from the previous sample time. Okay. All right, this area, this whole equation are at the left side of this equal, right? The right side of this equal is this area. Okay, it is here. Then we will move this area into the right side, into the right side then eventually it will convert to this. And uh, this equation here, don't forget this K. This K actually belongs to part of this X here. So we will multiply the K. Then if I clean this area, so this area now become this, will become this. So after this Z transform and convert to the difference equation, uh, original, transfer function here. Now we convert to an equation like this. All right, after we convert this style, 
Now our computer, our PLC, our code system and embedded system, we can use this equation to program. And this equation will represent this transfer function. Until here, it's still hard for you to understand what the role of this equation. Don't worry, I will show step by step. Okay, so let me clean up the left side and let me reorganize this area. So we will leave this area still here. This is the original first order transfer function. And uh, this is the converted difference equation. Okay, and here, if you recall, in the previous video, we determined the heater transfer function that was 50s plus 0 0.11 and the nominator is 0 0.11 because this is a, a was 0 0.11 right and the k was 50 okay to easier calculate so i will just do a little bit convert okay so this will convert to 50 multiply we will say 0 0.1 s plus 0 0.1 then this transfer function, it become here. This is our temperature, the heater transfer function. Okay, and in here, the A is equal to 0 0.1 and uh, K is 50. Okay, then let's firstly calculate what that looks like of this equation. Okay, so we wrote here. Then this yk here, we will calculate this area. We will see this area and this area, they are sharing use. So what the result of this area? We will see this is the e minus a means 0 0.1, right? And multiply the sample time. So usually while we are sampling the temperature signal, for example, we could use the one second or we can use 200 milliseconds, right? So here I will pick a very simple example. So here sample time we will use one second. Okay, so if the sample time is a one second here, here, this is the one. Keep in mind the unit, that's a second. Okay, and then this result equal to what? So the power will become 0 0.1 and E power minus 0 0.1. So we can calculate. All right, so we can use a calculator. Okay, so firstly we'll click the E and then we will do this power, power click this. And uh, then the power that is uh, 0 0.1 minus, okay, so equal. That basically equal to 0 0.9, okay? So that means this result equal to 0 0.9, okay? Then we will see this equation become what? It will become the yk equal to 0 0.9 times yk minus 1 plus 0 0.1 because 1 minus 0 0.9 equal to 0 0.1, right? And uh, this is the x, the previous sample result, and times k. k means 50 here. Then now this equation become yk 0 0.9 yk minus plus 5 x k minus 1. So it actually eventually this equation become very simple. Then what the actual means of this yk minus 1 and x k minus 1. Okay. So let me pick this heater as an example. While we are using this sample time is one second. So firstly, in your PLC or in your computer, your sample calling, calling the sample time for this equation must match with this T sample time setting here. Okay, if your T sample time equal to 200 milliseconds, 0 0.2 second. Then in your PLC, your calling, call this difference equation here. You have to use 0 0.2 milliseconds call, call faster for this equation, okay? Now we are using one second calculated this result here. 
Keep in mind, this equation calculated based on my sample time is one second. Then, while we are using any computer to call this equation, we have to use the one sample cycle time to call this equation. Okay? And while we are calling this equation, that means this equation also sampling the input and the output signal. For example, so your sampled x to the y may be doing this. Say in the first cycle, the sample time was 2 voltage and the output was 80 Celsius and 2.5 that equal to uh, 90. Uh, 3 watt equal to, uh, for example, um, 100. If the next cycle, this is the K time, okay? And the previous sample time, actually, it is here. And then based on this, before, the one sample before, it is K minus 2. And this line will become the K minus 3, okay? So when we try to calculate the YK at here, then that equal to what? that equal to 0 0.9 multiply the previous sample time of the y, that's the 100 degree, okay, Celsius degree, plus 5 multiply the x came from the previous sample time, this is the 3 here. Then this result equal to 90 plus 15. Then the result equal to 105. Okay, so we will see this is going higher, right? That makes sense. So this is how the computer system calculate this equation. So basically in the computer system, in the current cycling loop, this is the K time. And then you need to record the previous sample time because this, this came from the previous sample time. Then we can use the record previous sample time to calculate current the yk the y result this equation result yk this is the how this equation works then you can think about this this equation will become very simple right basically still if we define this yk let's say our plc variable that name the t current and the k minus one this is the temperature record right and x k minus one this is the input of the process system keep in mind here the x it is here it is here this is the input of our process system actually that come from the plc output okay this is the input came from the record okay this is the plc variable then this equation become very simple so your t current equal to 0 0.9 multiply the t record and plus the 5 multiply this x input record and then just below this line then the t record will equal to the t current Right? So when the PLC run from the top to down, then after we calculate this result, this result will be copied to here. Then the next cycle, it will, it will be here. Then the next cycle, it will be here, right? So this T current will be used as the next cycle T record. So basically this loop is doing the recursive style, it's accumulated, it's recursive running itself. This is how this difference equation, how that works. All right, let's do a quickly review. The transform, keep in mind while we're doing the Z transform, we have to use the ZOH, the zero order sample and holder, this concept. Then when original first order transfer function, we need to convert to a Z transfer. Then the style will be like this. Then after this derive, one original first transfer will be derived like this. And keep in mind, actually, K should be here also. This is the final Z transform from the first order transfer function. And then we will convert 
this z domain, this z transform into the difference equation, then the difference equation will be converted as this style here. And we will see this e power this area looks complicated, but once you have the a exponential conference and uh, your t sample time, once they are solid, this area is just one constant value here. Then while, while using this equation to do the real calculation, you will see this equation will become very simple. It's just one input here, one record result here, and this is the output. Then this equation, while using the computer system, keep running, 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 then this result will represent your real first order transfer function result. Okay, and in next video, I will show how can we use the PLC program this equation and we'll see while the computer start running, then this difference equation here will run the similar result as your real system, the first order curve. All right, this is the topic in this video. How can we convert a S domain, the first order transfer function into ultimately into this style? This is the difference equation here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.